Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross, and today I'm going to look at the recently announced Warhammer 40k Seasons. Is it good? Is it bad? Or is it just more of the same? Now, we did get to see some things, including Warzone Natchmons, which is Vigis Alone, and looking at the new box set, etc. Now, I'm not going to really discuss them. I'm more going to be looking at the idea of Seasons and what does it mean going forward. Firstly, I'm going to look at what was announced, what this sort of season's plan is looking at. Now, the season plan looks to be about six month period plan, which we should see a big focus on narrative in the six months area, where we're going to get new Warzone books, a Crusade mission packs, a two army box set and a kill team box set as well. Now, my big thing on this is that this is kind of what we've seen already, especially in the past year periods. and. So look at that, I'll look at each of these individually. So the Warzone books, we had Warzone Charadon, which uh, had the Book of Rust released in March 2021, and then the Book of Fire in July 2021. And then we had their Crusade mission packs, which were Plague, Purge, and Amidst the Ashes. We then saw Warzone Octarius books, these were Rising Tide released in October 2021, and then Critical Mass in November 2021, with Containment and Catastrophe Crusade books. Now in terms of the books, this kind of seems like the sixth month idea already, where we had Warzone Charadon as the first six month period one, really going from about, you know, Jura, you know January to, to June, I've delayed a wee bit into July, maybe because of various production issues. And then we had Octarius, which was sort of the later year one. Now they released very, very close to each other in October, November. But you get the idea that this six month period thing is kind of already in action with the books that we have a early year war zone focus for each each of the, the, the sections. So you had Chardon as the first year part and Octarius as the second part. In terms of two army box sets, this is, you know, we had Piety and Pain released in April, Hexfire in August and Shadow Throne in December. Again, this fair, feels very similar. Keep in mind, Shadow Throne was supposed to be out in December along with the Codexes. Codex is getting de uh, delayed. But we are seeing this idea that we're getting like one big box set one in the first start of the six month year, year and then a second box set, set in later. And when it comes to Kill Team, I can't really speculate on that one because that's all kind of still a wee bit new, but we are seeing the box sets there. So my big question in all of this is that what is new? This all seems kind of similar already in a lot of ways. The only thing I can see as a difference is that maybe all of it's going to be a bit more narratively tied together. Now, Piety and Pain actually did come a wee bit from Warzone Shadows on a wee bit because the Book of Rust did have, I believe, Drakari in it. Don't think it had uh, Adeptus Sororitas so much. Hexfire, well, I don't think that actually related to any of them, and neither did Shadow Throne. So maybe having these box sets more aimed towards the the actual books that are coming out might be a good thing, along with the kill teams as well. Now I'm going to look at my concerns and hopes, because there is a bit for both of them on this, and I'm going to start with concerns because I have a few more of them than I do hopes, but there is hopes I do have. Now, when it comes to current concerns, I believe a lot of this is kind of a rebranding exercise. We saw that the books are kind of already where they are with this and maybe even the, the box sets as well that we're getting in the structure already we've seen in the past year so really it's just rebranding it as seasons. Now why that gives me even more concerned is the idea of seasons is very reminiscent of online gaming seasons. Now I don't really play the sort of games that actually have these but I know that there's been many years of received backlash to the idea of them that they can be a bit predatory in their monetary sort of ways that they market and trying to gain as much money as possible. So maybe if it was maybe every three months we saw plans and everything then maybe we could look away but the fact it's six months really makes it sound like they've gone with seasons because that's a marketing strategy that has worked in the online gaming society and that just I don't know whether it's maybe just the name of it really gives me a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth that I'm not very happy with but again it could just be because of the branding part of it really speaks of an area of, of marketing I don't like. Uh, the current way campaign books are written and produced and this is entirely in my opinion are the worst thing Games Workshop is doing at the moment. Now many people are going to argue it's Warhammer Plus and I can totally get that and 
maybe I'll speak a bit more on this in another video, but I really find that campaign boots are not good. And I'll, my example of this, and I have always spoke about them, I've not been a fan, is that take the Admet Codex, Book of Rust and Fire. They were all released, 16 weeks I believe, apart from each other, and they cost £100 if you're to get them from Games Workshop, 30 for the Codex, 35 for each book. Now, I believe because of the backlash of the books, the... the uh, the next books, the Critical Mass one, etc., they actually got reduced down to £30. So really they realised when they were charging £35 for Rust and Fire, the next lot had to be brought down to 30 because I think a bit of backlash in there. Very rarely does Games Workshop actually reduce the prices of stuff, but that was the case there. Uh, your guess is as good as mine, but I'm going to guess it's due to how popular they were. Where the Rust book had five pages of rules for Admech and Fire had two pages of rules and I thought this was incredibly egregious. I have no problem with supplements, in fact I think supplements are a very good idea. You can execute them in a number of ways to really extend the lore and make them a bit of a, a love letter to the faction, make them play a bit more. I think the Space Marine ones at £20 if you play as Imperial Fists, which we have, they get a bit more rules to play more as Imperial Fists rather than just generic space marines so i think there's sometimes good ideas in that and the chaos space marine ones in psychic awakening is amazing i think that one is great value and really plays into each faction now when you have these ones split between books you had the supplement in rust and then you had the i think army of renown in fire it just felt really really bad i think they really need to look at these campaign books and really think about what they want to achieve i'll maybe speak about this more in a later time just discussing supplements in general some people love them some people don't i think the way they're doing them at the moment with these campaign books is the worst way possible it's not value for money and it's splitting up the rules and generally i don't think so so there seems to be a doubling down on these books and i think they just do not work and they're not good for the game at all so let's go into a bit more of my hopes now the seasons allow us to give us their sixth month month plan which will help players hopefully make more informed purchases. Now, they didn't announce this, but what I'm hoping is that they will announce sort of six month plan, the codexes that they do want to release within six months. Now they can say, look, they might not happen, plans do change, but by giving us the idea of the codexes and maybe the units that are they are working on, it will allow people to get much more informed purchases. You can see, right, my codex is getting updated, maybe I don't want to make that purchase at the moment and hold off for something new. So for instance, we might be getting, you know, Astra Militarum might be towards the tail end of the six month area. Maybe you want to hold off really investing in Astra Militarum till you see what's coming there in terms of new models, things getting updated. So I hope that is the case. I believe that more informed, rather than just giving us a month or two warning, that it gives us a six month, half a year plan and it will allow people to really plan out their purchases a little bit better. I could be a bit naive on that one, hoping for the best. I know that sometimes FOMO is a big part of trying to make sailing and then big push, you know, weeks before the release is. But a six month plan I think would really help the hobby for those interested in Games Workshop a lot in terms of making informed purchases. With the connected narrative we will see more interesting stories expanded upon rather than just touching on multiple ones and then they don't get much depth. I really like the idea of I think it was the Imperial, not the Imperial Nihilus, but the Necron one, I forget what it is off the top of my head, but I think that is kind of Nihilus as well. In general, I really like the idea of Necrons carving out their own way, and it was a real problem for Chaos because it sort of mitigated a lot of the psychic abilities. Psychic Awakening was really cool, I loved some of the stories in there. And even Vigilus I thought was incredibly interesting, but all of them seemed to get very small amounts of narrative and then they were gone. So I'm hoping that maybe a sixth month period of really explore, exploring the narrative might be very, very cool. I want to see the importance of Vigilus. I want to see why it is very important. And more so, and this might be a more controversial one for people, is that I hope that it gets put into Warhammer Plus in a way. Some of the stories and the, the, the narrative and the shows that we see. I want to see why Chaos specifically, and I, I know why, because of the link it has between the two areas of the Imperium. But I want to see, it sounds like a very interesting story, and I want it to be explored in full depth. Now, we see a lot of these in the campaign books, very, very good, they're okay. Some of them, Psycho Awakening, I really liked. I really liked how they use social media for stories as well. I remember two stories in there that were absolutely fantastic, the Custodes one, 
where they had to take on renegade space marines or what they thought were renegade space marines uh, which was kind of like primaris ones which very good story very very short but very very cool another one about uh guards and, and necron flayed ones i really hope that they expand on this idea as well we get more of the narrative and we see more of this sort of big story of vigilus and it gets propped up for six months and then it comes to a conclusion don't need to have loads of loads of wee stories I want to see maybe one big narrative and maybe some small ones as well and then lastly factions will be targeted and fulfilled how much you know how much is added to them I would argue in a way that they've actually done a good job of that in 9th edition at the moment. Necrons did a fantastic job really updating the faction. You don't need to update every model, but you need to add something to them. I think they did a good job in that. Orcs is a bit more controversial one, but always I love seeing troops getting updated. The Orc ones I know many, many people despise. I like the models, I maybe don't like the box set as much, but I think getting New York boys, in my opinion, I really, really like them. And then Adeptus of Sororitas, they did well the year before updating them and then they updated them I think this year and they did a good job in terms of just adding more models. So I've been really positive and I think even Space Marines adding on more of the, the assault, making them more combat heavy was really good for things like Blood Angels, Black Templars etc. So I really like what they've kind of done at the moment, looking at the weaknesses of factions and going right what do we need to add rather than just adding, well in the case of Orcs it was like a season of buggies. No, have a look at the basics, which is the extrude troops and do they need to be updated, and I think they've done a good job of that. And craft worlds? Well, I think they need more the Adeptus Sororitas treatment rather than, say, the Necron or Orc one. They need a big faction over, over uh, complete renovation, almost completely every model, not everyone, but a lot of them. And I don't think that's going to be the case, but it would be nice if it would be. But this idea of six months are really going to look at a faction and really add to it. Will they be successful in that? I don't know, but I, so far in the pre previous 9th edition, I've thought, in my personal view, they've been quite good, but I know many people disagree in that. And that is it for my thoughts when it comes to Warhammer 40k Seasons. Ultimately, I think it's just more of the same. I put that in the thumbnail because that's literally what I think. It's A lot of the ideas are kind of there in terms of unifying everything that they've done before, but just the idea of seasons feels really really wrong to me it just i've seen stuff use that marketing strategy before and it just really worries me just that tiny little bit now we've only just heard about this there may be a lot more to see coming up now i'm always going to be excited for new chaos space marine stuff i really love chaos space marines them and jacari are my two favorite factions so that'll be very very cool to see as well and as well as expanding on abaddon i feel uh he was done a little bit dirty and vigilous so let's really see him maybe do a little bit more damage would be quite nice. But ultimately, I'm very interested to hear what the community has to say. I have read a number of views already, some positive, some negative, but ultimately, I think that we're going to need to get this sort of idea of seasons really expanded beyond just the books and the box set. We need to see a little bit more than that. And I hope it is generally a good thing. But again, if they are just going with what they've already announced, it just seems a little bit more of the same. So thanks again, and uh, please comment, share, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you on our Tabletop Salt Battle Report.